Hey, welcome, or oh, welcome back, to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that, fingers crossed, you're watching this in black and white, because this is the continuation of my pick series. And this time, I'm absolutely delighted that it is a one-on-one -on -one collaboration with the beautiful Laura from Gold Star Work. Now, she and I have collabed in a number of different group collabs. We also have our Three Palettes, One Continent series that we do with Nona. But this is the first time we've done a one-on-one -on -one collab, and it's the first time she has joined in with the pick series. So, if you want to find out exactly what the photograph is, that is our inspiration for our looks this time, and you want to see how this looks in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, you are in a precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, Put your feet up and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, you will have seen from the intro, which fingers crossed I remember to do in black and white, that this is a continuation of my pick series. And it's the first time I'm collabing on our own with Laura from Gold Star Work. We've collabed together in bigger groups and we've collabed together in the Three Continents One palette series with Nona. But this is the first time we've done a one-on-one -on -one collab, which is awesome. Um, she's an artist, and I was really hoping that when I said, uh, do you want to choose the first colour or shall I, I was really, you know, the first photo for us to use for her inspiration, I was really hoping she'd say she would choose, and that she would trust me enough to send over a piece of her artwork. Because, I mean, that, I had that with Anne. She, she's actually sent over a photo of... Um, an artwork that she created and although it does increase the pressure a bit because this is their artwork that they have created and they're trusting me to produce an eye look to to recreate or to be inspired by but it does increase the pressure a little bit but I kind of like that I like that they trust me enough to do a look worthy enough of their artwork um, and she sent across this picture which is just beautiful. Um, she lives in New Zealand and I said to her, is this from your imagination or is this near you? Because I know New Zealand is beautiful. Um, I've got a sister and brother-in-law out in New Zealand. Um, hi Sam. <laughs> and of course, nephews and who are growing like weeds in the wonderful New Zealand. Whether they have out there, uh, but she, this is actually the view from her bedroom window. So you've got the beautiful blues and lilacs in the top of the sky. Then it comes down to as the sun's coming up, driving the dusk away. You, you're getting the warmer... I've got it on my screen here. You're getting the warmer colours, the yellows, the oranges, the pinks. Beautiful. Then you've got the actual scenery at the bottom. You've got the... The, the top of the hill there being reflected up and showing up all kinds of almost autumnal colours reflecting the sunlight back up. You've got um, beautiful grass, the green, the lovely sort of like icy white blue water. You've got trees there, some look blue, some look red and you know some little houses in there as well by the look of it. Just stunning, so many colours to play with. Um, a little bit scary, a little bit intimidating, but I think I know what I'm going to do. I've pulled my Dream with a Vision from Makeup Obsession. I've pulled my Coloured Rain Safari Rain. And I've pulled my Blush Tribe for Fusion. Now this was limited edition last year. She hasn't bought it back yet this year. Um... I was really hoping that she would because Paulina Palette came back briefly. Um, 
which is also limited run, but unfortunately full fusion hasn't come back yet. But I'm sure that if you're going to do this, you will use your own palettes that you've got there. So this is still a teaching channel and with my chronic pain and everything, I don't blend that quick anyway, but I deliberately slow it down a bit so that complete beginners who've never picked up a brush before can still follow. There's a speed widget up there if I'm going too slow for you. Just speed me up. It doesn't bother me. I'm not even going to know unless you tell me. And even if you do tell me, it's not going to bother me. Right, let's get you zoomed in. My face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And as always on my eyes, I have got my Crow and Pebble Primer. Um, I love these. They, they have them in six colours. White is the lightest. They have a deep chocolate brown and a black at the other end of the spectrum. And then three skin tone shades in between. Uh, I do have a discount code. As far as I know, it's not affiliated. They've not mentioned me getting anything back from it. Not that I'm worried about that. I'd rather recommend something to you and have you be able to save money on it because what I love about this is it goes on dry it's not sticky at all which means you don't have to set it first and if you are going straight in with colour you can blend straight away you don't have to tap it on tap it on tap it on build it up build it up and then barely blend with it you can blend straight away with this which is awesome and obviously being the white base it's really going to help with these um, more pastel tones I'm going to be using initially, fingers crossed, um, to, you know, help the colours really pow. Now, um, I've got what's known as, you can hear hubby at the door, there's a poster there. I've got what's known as deep set or sometimes they're called double lidded eyes. Um, a lot of people with this mistakenly think or are mistakenly told they have hooded lids because we have the same issue we get the transference of shimmer onto the upper lid if we're cutting our crease we can't just cut the socket we have to go onto the upper lid and even when we're wearing glitter glue if we put glitters on we're going to get a bare patch right through the crease there mm -hmm. rude phone rude do you mind honestly Put you on silent and you're still vibrating. Good lord. Um, as I was saying, um, hopefully that'll stop that. I'm going to explain to you the difference between hooded lids and deep set eyes, and I'm going to give you a tip for each type of eye so that no matter what tutorial you're watching on YouTube, you can still follow it and make it work for your eye shape. Now, when I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile eyelid from inner to outer corner. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if my static lid completely covers right down to my lash line, part or all of my mobile lid, that I have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. If I cover my mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see as much lid space again that tucks back away in the crease and if I roll it up and cover the static lid and do the same thing you can see I've got static lid that also ends up tucking back in and it's those two parts of the lid rubbing together that gives us the same issues as hooded lids right how to fix it if you've got hooded lids get something like this or a pencil brush and just sketch out on your static lid where you need your new crease to fall Obviously it's going to reduce the space between your crease and your new brow, so just use slightly smaller brushes and I try to, unless I'm doing an editorial look, I try to leave a gap between the colour and my brow. You may find you have to go right up to your brow. Now, with deep set eyes, what well, all we have to do is when we're blending the colour through our crease, every so often sit back, relax, relax our brows and just check you can see it when your eyes are open. It's that simple. But as you can see, it is two very, very different ways of tackling the same issue. Right. I'm going to go in with a JS5. Am I going to go with the JS5 or should I start with the JS6? I think I'll start with the JS5. I'm going to start off using natural hair brushes. 
um, if the pigments don't work well with it because it is pressed pigments that I'm using um, from this Makeup Obsession palette then I will switch to uh, synthetic brushes. So I'm going to start off by going into Clarity which is a beautiful baby blue because I want to try and I want to try and get that sky recreated. I'm just going to start off by just blending it really lightly here. Hmm. Change your plan. I'm going to go into my pigment drawer. Some of the crow and pebble pigments out. Because this dream of the vision is not going on with enough oomph for me. So I'm going to go into the crow and pebble curse of dimensionality pigment first, which is the baby blue. Turn this flat, I'm going to drop it everywhere because I know what I'm like, I'm bloody klutz. There we go, that's better. I'm going to start off just blending this very lightly at the top of the eye. Now working with loose pigment is really easy because it's just like, you know when you kick up dust in your, in your pressed pigment and then you pick the loose pigment up. Well that's basically what you're doing with the loose pigment. You're just picking the loose pigment up. It's much much easier to get colours laid down with a loose pigment. It just can be a bit messy. You just have to remember to tap your brush off that's all. So Laura. Uh, she is based in New Zealand as I've already said and she is an artist not just with makeup. She is actually an artist. She she painted that picture that we are using as our inspiration for today's series. I mean, if you've, if you've never watched um, any of my photo inspirations before, basically uh, one photo is used by two people to create a makeup look inspired by it. You can only use colours that are actually in the painting or the picture. You can't add any additional colours in and uh, you don't have to use all of the colours if you don't want to. Now the only thing with you using those pigments is you normally will get some kind of fallout. Doesn't worry me because I do my base afterwards anyway. But if you are the kind of person that does your base first and you are not over the age of 30 then just put some you know, translucent powder down to catch the fallout. Okay, that's blended in really nicely. I'd forgotten how much I like these pigments. Um, I actually discovered the primer when I bought these because I bought these and then bought the primer to because I didn't have a white primer at the time. I was using the um, Mac. Soft ochre, which is very yellow based, and I wanted a, a proper white base for it, so I actually bought a sample pot of their eye primer and went through the sample pot, bought a full pot, and that's the one I'm using now. Um, it's amazing. Right, I'm just cleaning the blue off of this brush well, as best I can on a clean washcloth. I prefer this. To using a colour switch it's much more gentle especially when you are using natural brushes which this is of course. Right and now I'm going to go into the Paxos shade from Crow and Pebble which is the gorgeous lavender lilac because obviously I'm starting off with the top of the sky 
I'm just going to blend that lilac across and just blend it into the blue a little bit. I love working with loose pigments. I know a lot of people are intimidated by it, but really, so long as you stand them on a flat surface when you're using them and tap off well, it really is no more difficult than using. In fact, if anything, it's easier because you, you know you're picking pigment up on the brush. Uh, yes, so, and she's an artist, and uh, she, when she sent this photo across, I was just absolutely blown away, I thought it was so beautiful, and there are so many lovely colours in it, I mean, starting off with these cooler tones at the top of the picture, where dusk, you know, the night sky is being driven away by the sunrise, um, so you've got these gorgeous light, icier tones at the top, coming down to warmer tones, and then and then the uh, you know the gorgeous New Zealand landscape at the bottom. I mean, it's there's a reason they filmed the Lord of the Rings films out there and the Hobbit out there. Just got the most beautiful scenery they really have. I always said if ever I had to if I had to choose somewhere else in the world to live, it would either be New Zealand or Canada. Those are the two places. Canada in the fall, New Zealand at the rest of the year, I think. Well, it does get quite hot down there, so I'd probably struggle with my fibro. So maybe, maybe New Zealand in their winter. <laughs> and then go to Canada for the fall. I'm just blending those together. And you can see they, they really do buff together so beautifully. I like that. I like that a lot. Alright, clean up the brush off. Let's grab this slightly smaller one. This is clean but it's just stained. This is the JS6. Just give that a bit of a wipe on here. Yeah, I don't like using a colour switch anymore. I'm, I much prefer using either a microfiber cloth or um, you know, a washcloth or something. I didn't tell you the name of this one. This is Cash Eviction because it was um, it was all computer themed. There were, I believe, fifteen pigments in total: five neutral, five pastel, five deep. And I just picked up the pastel shades. Right, so I'm going to come in with that just here. Kind of on the inner part here, buffing it up to meet that blue, trying to keep the blue separate from the yellow as much as I can. Don't really want it to go green just yet. So I'm being very, very careful how I'm blending and buffing that around. And again, just sitting back and making sure I can still see it. So, yeah, I've collabed with Laura on a few kind of group, you know, larger group collabs we've been involved in. And obviously we have the Three Continents, One Palette series that we do with Nona, where we use the uh, Colourpop monochrome palettes to create looks from which is awesome put the lid back on these pigments seem to last forever as well I've used them quite a lot and they still seem pretty much as full as they were when I first got them to be quite frank I'm just taking some of the yellow off of the brush and I'm going to go into the kind of peachy toned one called Fuzza. Like Huzzah, but with an F and an R instead of an H. No, H. <laughs> right. 
And this I'm going to buff in on this side here. Again, I'm taking very little initially because I slowly want to build the pigment up just up here. I don't want it to be like a solid bump line. But if I take too much, it'll overwhelm the purple, which I don't want it to do. I still want that to have its moment up here. Clean the brush off a little bit, and then buff at the edge, and where the yellow meets that orange or peach. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Laura does it because obviously she did the painting in the first place, so it's going to be really, really interesting to see how she interprets it on her eyes. I just hope that she's pleased with what I've done. Um, like I said, it does give a little bit of extra pressure. Um, when you're recreating somebody's actual artwork rather than just a random photo that you found that you liked. Um, I think the first few that I did were kind of galaxy themed. I've been watching some old Sky at Nights with Patrick Moore. UK viewers will know who I'm talking about. US viewers and the rest of the world, you do not know what you missed with him. He was so funny. And the man could play the xylophone like nobody's business. I'm just checking that I've got the same kind of shape both sides because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical because we're not James Charles and we don't Photoshop our results. Yes, that's shade. No, I don't care. I'm just going to use my, my finger there just to buff those two together. Because sometimes the heat from your finger can actually blend them just that little bit. Because I want it a little bit heavy there. liking this so far. Lip back on my pigments and I'm gonna grab my Coloured Rain Safari Rain palette and I'm just gonna grab, I'm gonna go to a synthetic brush now. This is the JS12. Again it's clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to go into Congo Basin in here, which is a really gorgeous olive green. I'm going to use this in very, very tiny circular movements all the way through. And I reverse the direction when I come back out, just because I find it, it gently moves the skin around on your eyelid without pulling at it but it stops you from getting that like barcoding effect. But you can see when I relax my brows now, you can't actually see that. So I do need to come up just a fraction higher with it. This is such a lovely, this is actually one of the palettes my hubby got me. Bless him. I, I came in close then because I wanted to keep control over the size of the circle but I do normally hold my brushes right at the end so I put as little pressure on the skin of my eye as possible. So there you can see just bringing it up just that sort of millimetre or two just allows it to be seen when your eye is open. I'm going to add a little bit of this green just to the outer edge here. Hmm. 
I like that. And now the same this side. Now with this eye being a blind one, I can actually close the eye to show you what I'm doing. Now, the only problem with this one being my blind eye is that I have got super deep creasing here, which you can see does give me that white bar coating. And unfortunately I do have to stretch my lid out on this side because the circular movements are not enough to move the skin around because the, the creasing that side is just too deep. Do not do that. Check to see whether the bar, whether the circular movement will work for you. And if it does, use that because otherwise you will end up with super deep creasing. And I can promise you, you will not like it. So again, just really buffing that. But I still want to see the yellow and I still want to see the orange. I kind of lost a bit of the yellow there. I may go back in again in a minute with some some of the yellow. I'll see how I feel when I get to the end of the bit there, end of the look. Right, now I'm going to get this, again, synthetic smudger brush, JS10. And I'm going to go into Jungle, which is like a, a deep teal. So this will be the trees at the front, they've got that bluey green effect. I'm just going to get a little mirror so I can look down in just so that you can see what I'm doing properly with me still being on screen. I'm just going to really gently build this colour up. It's a matte and I'm just going in dry with it. I'm just gently building that colour up and blending it seamlessly into the olive green on the edge. And then I'm going to do the same with this eye. Just pat the colour on to the area that you want. I could do a cut crease but I kind of want this to be a little bit softer. Which is why I'm doing it this way. And then again just blend into the edge there. Nice. And then I'm going to grab my full fusion palette and a JS24. This is actually a lip brush, but I like it because it's great for getting into this inner corner here. And you can see some of those trees are a real brilliant bright red on that coastline. Or the edge of the river. So I'm going to get this and I'm going to go right in with this beautiful red. time okay let's try a different brush maybe it's not liking that brush because normally this red goes on much brighter than that let's grab a JS13 synthetic brush okay why is my red not going on properly? 
because you can see it's still got pigment. Maybe I'll try wetting it. Always wet the pigment on the brush, never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. There we go. I'm wondering if it's because I've got some of the yellow from above was on this bit so I've not got a properly sticky base for the red to attach to so that could be why it's going on a tad patchy. Because it did not perform like this the last time I used it. So, dry the brush off, pack some pigment on the brush, wet the brush, and pop some on on this side. See that's gone on absolutely fine this side. understand why I was having so much problem this side because you just saw that I did nothing different and then that went on perfectly must have been my eyes playing me around today I do get that sometimes I get um, super dry patches on my eyes even though I'm oily combo um, I do get dry patches usually here and here but obviously I'm having an issue there today why it just doesn't want to take pigment which is rather annoying And then I'm going to go into Dream with the Vision and I'm going to pick up I think Silver Lining which is a eyeshadow, not a pressed pigment but it's a nice bluey white shimmer. I'm just going to wet that brush, well wet that shimmer I should say, and pop this right on the inner corner to be the water, the river that we can see running through the picture. I should do the same in the other eye. Again, pack the pigment on, wet the brush, and apply to lid. Okay, right. I'm going to pause you while I tidy up this fallout, put my loose pigments away, um, put some foundation etc on and I will be back to finish off this look with you. So uh, you will see me absolutely instantly and I will see you the very next time that I press the record button. So, hi. I am back. Right. Grabbing the flat top brush that we talked about earlier and I'm going back into my Colour Rain palette. And I am going to go into... Hmm, let me have a look at the picture again. Is there any colour that I haven't used yet? 
No, not really. I think I've covered pretty much all of it. Cool. Right, okay, I'm going to go into uh, jungle again, which is that teal. And I'm going to pop that right up tight underneath the bottom lashes, about halfway along. And then I'm going to go into Congo Basin and do the front bit. Like so. And then, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it because it's flat top but it's chunky. I'm just going to go into Green Valley, which is actually a shimmer. I'm going to buff that very carefully along that lower lash line, just to deepen it up, because at the bottom of the picture it does go quite deep in colour. This is my favourite bit. I think I'm going to go in with Fenty Lightning Dust, which is this side. Uh, the brush that I'm using is actually a lip brush that I bought from eBay years and years and years ago, probably about a decade ago now. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that just up under the tail of my brow. And I think I might top that with a bit of fire crystal. Just to give it a bit of extra oomph. And then I'm going to use fire crystal on the inner corner here. And run that down and blend it in with the green that I've put underneath my eye. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I chuck highlight on the rest of my face, uh, put some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with my hair, and I'll be back with my final look. There we go. So, what do we think? Put the picture back up there again. Do we think I've done an acceptable? recreation of this particular picture. The lipstick, if you're wondering, is a Gerard Cosmetics Hydra Matte in shade Sedona. Uh, hopefully it's going to focus. There we go. Um, I do have my Gerard um, discount linked below. That one is affiliated. Just checking I didn't have lipstick on my teeth. Hair is still going nuts. If it looks a strange colour, it's because uh, a couple of weeks ago I put a um, a green UV dye on it to dye the glitter highlights, and uh, it, it's it's one of those ones that slowly washes out, so it's, it's going a bit of a weird shade. So just if it matches the uh, painting, it's 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 green. <coughs> But this is my finished look. Um, the mascara that I used is the Essence Force Lash Lashes Extreme Volume and Curl, if I can actually speak. Uh, I used my Winky Lux Latte Bronzer and my Juvia's Freak Blush in say, shade Serafina. Obviously I used the Fenty Highlighter everywhere else. Um, I think that was one of the things I hadn't told you. Yeah, just standard brow pencil. Uh, the Revolution 
uh, Define and Fill Brow Pencil Precision Micro Blade in Dark Brown. So, this is my interpretation of Laura's amazing photo, or painting, I should say, photo of her painting. So, if you are one of my 4F babies, um, now you've watched this and obviously you will have pressed like and I'm guessing you're writing a comment right now. Hint, hint, thank you kindly. Um, once you've done all that, just double check you're still subscribed, even if I'm appearing in your suggested videos, because a lot of people are getting unsubscribed. Um, it's very frustrating for me, it's very frustrating for them. So just quick double check that the subscribed is still grey and you haven't gone back to not being subscribed. Um, once you've done that, please pop over to Laura's channel and check out her look and see exactly how she has interpreted her painting. And obviously, do all those good things with her too. Subscribe, like, comment, share. She's a really, really lovely woman. She knows, I didn't talk very much about her in this to be honest, but she knows so much about colour theory. She did an awesome um, film not too long ago using the ColourPop uh -huh, honey, yellow palette, showing you how you can deepen it up with loads of different colours, including purple, and trying to mix yellow and purple together without them going muddy, that takes skill. That's why the lilac was this side and the yellow was this side. I'm fooling no one here. I'm not a beginner, but I'm nowhere near an expert either. Uh, but hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you've made it this far through, then I'm hoping you've enjoyed it. If you're new here, feel free to join the 4F family by hitting that subscribe button and then jumping through all the flaming hoops that YouTube want you to jump through in order to get notified of any new films that I put up. Um, if you are here from Laura's channel and this is the first one of my films you've seen, do feel free to have a wander through the back catalogue of uh, films that I've got, uh, including I've got um, I've got a collaborations folder which has got every single collab in it, and I've also got a photo inspiration folder, which is just this photo inspiration series. So if you just want to see more of this kind of thing, there is a playlist for that. You can start it at number one and just sit back and enjoy yourself and. Have a good old binge watching session, you know, put your feet up, grab a drink, if it's horrible weather outside, just curl up nice and warm, drink, snack, and just enjoy watching some films. Right, that is quite enough for me for one day. Uh, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. And that was a bike doing about 60 in a 30 zone on a wet road. <sighs> Bye for now. Mm -hmm.